Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the Grateful Nation, to another episode of the I'm Doing Great podcast. We got a great show for you today, but before we get into it, I'm going to tell you guys a couple of things. Like, subscribe. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers by December. I'm not too optimistic about it. Don't say that. But you should be, because we're going to get there, Mm. okay? Uh, Go to doinggreat.locals.com, where you're going to be able to get extra content like Q&A feature where you can ask our guests more questions that they that we don't do on the regular show. Uh, go to the idgmensclub.locals.com to sign up for the men's club. We are onboarding right now. We'll launch August 20th. Gina's uh, women's only health page at myhealthshift.com. But, um, I, you know, I, before we actually like get into the meat of the show and introduce the guests for today, I wanted to um, address a uh, recent controversy sur- surrounding uh, Gina and myself in the show uh, where we made a, a, a philosophical opinion in saying that, um, you know, abortion is worse than slavery. And uh, I thought about it and I still stand by it, but I thought about it and there are, there, there are a list of other things that I think abortion is worse than. So let me go through that list. Spirit Airlines, for sure. Um, I'll reiterate it. Slavery. Abortion is worse than slavery. Abortion, worse, abortion is worse than Arby's. Arby sucks. Mm. Abortion sucks more. Mm. Uh, drag queen brunch and story hour. Mm. Abortion is definitely worse than those Maybe two things. Maybe just drag queens in general. Yeah. Uh, soggy bathroom mats. Nobody likes those. More people should not like abortions. They're worse than soggy bathroom mats. Uh, the Holocaust. Uh-oh. A lot of people didn't think I would say it, but yeah. Abortion is worse than the Holocaust. And Joe Biden's dementia rounds out our list of things that <laughs> abortion is worse than. And, you know, comparing it to the Holocaust is a little bit different only because the Holocaust didn't happen in the U.S. I picked slavery because slavery happened in the U.S. It's over now. Uh, Abortion is still ongoing in the United States and around the world. Um, But just if we're going by loss of life alone, it beats out slavery and the Holocaust, the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, the Trail of Tears march, pretty much almost every human rights atrocity in the last hundred years or so, abortion has taken more lives. Um, And a lot of people said, you'll never say that to a black person. So introducing our (laughs) guest for today, Shekinah, do you believe abortion is worse than slavery? Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Absolutely. Please welcome Shekinah to to the show, everybody. (laughs) Okay, we uh, we were not expecting that. We didn't ask, we did not (laughs) prep Shekinah with this question. We just decided to... drop it in her lap on camera oh wait and yeah hold on here because we have a member in the audience who i believe is also of the uh uh non-lack of melanin club um <laughs> so let's just hear let's just hear his answer uh sir do you believe that uh, abortion is worse than slavery facts okay so we have two blacks <laughs> that agree with us <laughs> And let me just let me I'll listen, I'll get it all off my uh, chest. So because you agree with us, uh, what, what are you Uncle Tom? Oh yeah. All that other stuff, those yeah. horrible The C word. The C word. Oh yeah. 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 The C word. The H N word. Oh the O H N. The H N. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Um but yeah, Shekinah, thank you for coming on to the show. Of course. I'm excited. This is cool. Yeah, we were really excited on. to have you. What are we, we're gonna talk about biblical things. We're gonna yeah. talk about women things. Women things. Do you want a lot of people criticize me where they were like, the white dude just let let the Asian girl take it because he was like, You got this and backed away, remember? Because I was Oh yeah, they, yeah, they said <laughs> that I was like single camera, go, you got this. Yeah. And backed away. So how about the women's stuff? stories that we want to talk about what did you want to talk yeah, about we've got you guys some, you guys can talk about there's it. a couple of trending things i wanted to ask you about shekinah oh, yeah. um i mean i guess oh, let's just get straight into it there's one story that's really trending that came from tiktok um have you heard of the ren eleanor story i don't know if i have okay so it's it's, it's this toddler she's three years old and her mother has a tiktok that has over 17 million followers wow. and yeah and so there's a lot of mom TikTokers now who are criticizing her because all of her videos of her daughter and they're finding that all of her videos are saved like 400,000 times. And like the videos that are saved are the little girl eating a hot dog and like crazy stuff like this. And it sparked this national conversation mm-hmm. of whether children belong on social media. And I just find it to be like, everyone's so late to the conversation. Mm -hmm. This to me is like, I don't even know how this is a question. And it got me thinking a lot about how Kanye recently, probably a couple of months ago now, people were saying that he was having some sort of mental breakdown because he got really upset that his daughter North, I think she's nine years old, Mm -hmm. 
that she was on social media and that Kim was letting her do all these videos and sing songs about like, I, I kissed my emo girlfriend or something. And now that you have a lot of these people on social media who are very likely leftists or liberal in their beliefs, now they're starting to say, well, you know, maybe we should keep kids off of social media. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, duh, like, Duh. Yeah. I, don't, I I can't even believe this is a question. Like both yeah. of us are pretty much the same. Like we don't put our kids on social media. Like I'm not going to, I'm not, put, I'm not documenting everything that my daughter does. I'm not doc. You're not documenting everything that your daughter does. And it just, it, it's, it's a conversation that I think is really interesting because I know that there are some people that even on the right who disagree with me. And they say that, that kids sh- can have a place on social media. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I'm completely against children on social media. And, and the reason why is because of what social media has become. I don't necessarily think the intentions were bad, but if you just look what social media is and what it has done mentally to children, mm. I think it's a serious, serious, serious mental problem. Mm-hmm. And it's setting expectations for children that they shouldn't have. They should be able to be kids. And like, for example, Kanye West was completely right. Mm-hmm. North should not be on social media. If Pornhub can have an Instagram account with 12 million followers on it, I don't think your kids should be on Does social it? media. Yeah, <gasps> absolutely. I yeah. don't know that. They have a verified account, too. It's verified. <gasps> yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the difference with us is yeah. that our kids are on. We, 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 we have a private Instagram, like I have a private Instagram for my daughter that my wife has just so that family members and stuff. It, it's just, you know, cool. You could put like little stories of all their day and, you know, it's private. Mm-hmm. If we don't know who you are, even if we're friends with you on the Internet, you don't get it. Same. We have to know you. It's personal friends and family. Only. We have the same account. I've had I've had some like loyal followers who've been with me since day one. They request and I still deny because yeah. I don't know them personally. Like right. I only only people that I know very well in person, family or friends can follow our private account. And I guarantee it's always like one of these things where like, let's create, you know, a form or let's create an app for kids that they can be social on. No, why? that's how the pedos get on there, man. Why? I don't know. I, I Everybody needs to be included in everything. I don't know. Um, I, I kind of think that it, it all kind of almost relates back to moral relativism, like this whole idea, live and let live. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, parents, you can make a decision for your own kids, make a decision for your own family. Well, there are a lot of things that are just simply right and simply wrong. Yeah. And I think people are really afraid to say that. Yeah, I think people are afraid to just stand up and say, I have morals and values. I don't want my kid on social media. And it's not because I hate them. It's actually because I love them and I want what's best for them. And there are multiple studies that have been done to show that social media is doing more harm to kids than good. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. And there's just a lot of creeps. There's a lot of really creepy Mm -hmm. people on social media. Mm -hmm. I've I've heard so many viral stories of children that have been taken advantage of by really creepy people on social media. So I'm totally against it. Mm -hmm. And I think more people should be too. (laughs) But yeah. yeah. So you've heard that on Twitter, they, um, they ban the word. Did they ban the word groomer? Like you can't say groomer on Twitter. Wait, what? Yeah. I heard about that. Reddit. You said Reddit. Reddit, Well, I know Reddit did, but I think if you you look it up, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So what happens if I tweet groomer right now? You probably get a, a strike. Not uh, what's a Twitter thing. You probably get a uh, locked out temporary, yeah. oh, temporary yeah. ban. Probably. How? They, Let's look it up crazy. in real time. <laughs> Groomer Twitter. Is it? She usually has her laptop. Ban. Oh, I do actually. Hold on. I get it out. Well, no, what you just, you searched it right there. Twitter has a ban <laughs> on calling transgender people groomers. Oh, so it's like transgender people. You can't call them groomers. Oh. oh, or you can't tell like journalists. Who oh, so it's an, it's an anti LGBTQ slur. How many more letters are they going to add to it? Bryson's so over wait, there. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, it, it's, it's bannable under certain context. Yeah. So it says, but its enforcement is lacking on Wednesday. Da, 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 reported that a subreddit post inadvertently intensified pressure on Twitter to ban calling LGBT people groomers. Grooming is a slur that falsely equates being LGBT with being a pedophile. It's yeah, a term of endearment. Can we just unpack that? I mean, they're purposefully going after children, though. Young children. That's literally the whole point. They literally feeling. say we're coming for your kids. Yeah. Yeah. There right. Was, oh, I heard my... That was me. Gina. Um, I heard Michael Knowles talk about this on a show on the drive here. There was a woman on TikTok, a teacher, because teachers and nurses, they're just exclusively on TikTok. They're backed yeah. by TikTok. They're signed oh. to TikTok. Um, one teacher said that her whole second grade class transitioned like in real time in front of her she was like one of my students it they i don't know one of my students was safe enough 
to say his pronouns with me. And within that same time period before class was over, my whole class were comfortable in changing their pronouns. Yeah, she needs to be fired. 100%. Jail. 100 Jail, jail actually. Yeah. Jail, I'm, straight I'm to cool jail. Prison. Yeah. Yeah, jail, straight to jail. And she was like, I don't understand that like these kids get it and the only people that have hangups and problems with it or just problems in general, she just said problems, are adults. And Michael was like, yeah, someone has hangups about it, all right. Yeah. It's you, the adult. These aren't your kids. You're supposed to be teaching these kids not what grade? Them. Second grade, seven year old. Oh my gosh. She definitely needs to go to jail. Lock her up. Yeah. yeah. Solitary confinement for a while. Let her think about it. Appropriate use of the word groomer. If I had a Twitter, I would say it. I would tweet it. I wonder if it happens if I just tweet groomer right now. <laughs> well, Tim Dillon, if, if you're watching the show, Tim Dillon is, Tim Dillon watches your Twitter just to see how far he can go. So do it for Tim. <laughs> uh, Tim, come on the show, please. Please come on the show. Um, so Shekinah, there's a lot of things I want to talk to you about. Yeah. You you have such a great presence online. You're one of those young conservative Gen Zers that um, is countercultural in the sense that you really promote traditional values. And I think what's having a moment right now, what is actually punk rock and countercultural right now is having traditional values, is valuing marriage and family. And even as someone who's young and maybe not married yet, promoting those values and encouraging young women to save themselves for marriage, number one, and to, to make it a mission to find a husband so they can have a family. Um, and I don't really see many other girls your age who are doing this. I mean, do you get a lot of backlash from girls in your demographic? Do they call you names and say all sorts of stuff about your traditional values? Oh, absolutely. Especially because I'm a black woman, you know, so that adds a you're whole- You're black? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that adds a whole like twist to it. It's like you're a black woman saying these things. So I get a lot of flack, especially since- you know, I'm young, too. They're like, oh, well, you haven't experienced the world yet. You need to experience the world and then you'll change. But yeah, I get a lot of backlash because I don't, especially on my stories, I don't hold back. I just say what I think on my stories and people, I've had a lot of people unfollow me, too, even, you know, conservatives or people on the right. What's but, their what's their main issue with you? What have been issues that conservatives would unfollow you for? Well, even if I just simply state the fact that I think that traditional values are in general better for society, mm -hmm. they will be like, oh, well, it's not not everyone can have that lifestyle. Not all of us have that opportunity. And they use their own specific instances to like. Anecdotal. Delegitimize yeah. the entire idea of what traditional values are. OK. And I, to me, it's like, if you didn't grow up with that upbringing, it's okay. And it's okay to realize like the failures of other people in your life or people around you, but it's okay to change too. You don't have to continue that just because that's what you grew up around. Right. What do they mean when they say you're young, you haven't experienced the world? I mean, because when I hear stuff like that, it's almost like they're implying that you're young, you know, you need to go experience the world and travel and sleep around and party and oh, do yeah. all that stuff. It's it's like they Well, that's cuz they're trying to convince her of their own perspective. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying if I if I tell someone you're young, you haven't experienced the world, I'm usually saying that because I'm trying to tell them you don't know how good you have it here. You're young, you haven't seen the rest of the world yet. You haven't seen extreme poverty, you haven't seen extreme suffering. Go out and see that. So a woman who says you're young to be so traditional, like go out and see the world. They just want you to be like a W word. They they want <laughs> they want you to go and sleep around and party. Oh yeah, exactly. Because that's, that's what fun it. is now. They mm. always talk, oh they they say go get laid. Yeah, you need to go get laid. You're just so uptight. I get that a lot. They say and that I'm to like, you. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, this is really wow. where society has come. Like yeah. it's kind of crazy. Wow, it's always a weird. That's always a weird comeback. Oh, go get laid. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes I'll say that to someone if they yell at me in traffic. I'm like, get laid. But that's not like a serious thing. <laughs> do you thing. mean like flat, like get run over in traffic? Or no, 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 no. I mean sexually. like, no. yeah, go go have a sexual experience with your husband so you're not so uptight. You, know, you don't want to tell to get like laid? A you don't want to tell a boxer before fight to get laid. You do that after the fight. Oh, they save it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they save it. Yeah. Yeah, honey, before you compete, do you do you abstain? Is that what they do in jujitsu too? Usually it's yeah. a thing. You got to get him a mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. It's, it's a thing. Nice. Um, one thing I, I wanted to talk to you about, I don't know if you know this, but you're adopted. Mm -hmm. And oh, someone wanted you to, I don't, did they, 
Someone wanted you to talk about that. I think it was in a locals question. <laughs> I think I think it's a really fascinating story. Um, I'm not going to tell it. So yeah, you're adopted. Where'd you grow up? Who adopted you, et cetera? So I was adopted at two weeks old from Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, my birth mom was 15 years old when wow. she had what? me. And she chose me. She chose to put me up for adoption in a Christian adoption agency specifically. And she picked out my family instead of aborting me because mm -hmm. that was on the table. And she did have that as an option and she considered it, but she chose not to. Mm. And yeah, have you, and she have picked you my met parents. Her, have you met her since? No, I do know I have four siblings. Okay. From what I understand. So you and don't know yeah. the reasoning, like you wouldn't be able to get the reason from her. Like, why no. didn't you do this? Why did you do this? Oh, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Do you yep. know if she held you? I, she did, yeah. There's actually a picture of me when I was like immediately born of her holding me. Oh. And I can see her hand. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's sad. Wow, yep. I just got chills. Yeah. Okay, so talk about the family that adopted you. So my parents adopted me when they were actually later on in life. They actually almost weren't able to adopt me because they were so much older. My dad was 47, I believe, and my mom was 37. Adoptive parents. My adoptive parents. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but they decided later on, because my mom always wanted to adopt, but she already had three kids. And so my dad was like, not really on board with it. And then one year he surprised her in May during their anniversary on the 30th. And I was home by September. <laughs> September oh, really? 10th is when they actually got me. And then, yeah. So you're about like a three month old? I was two weeks old. But when, they when, had, they when had. They came to, when you got to the house, you were two weeks or? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. They couldn't, I couldn't be adopted right away in the state of okay. Mississippi. It had to be after two weeks. But Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And that that's what I hear. That, what what is it? The stats today is I think there are like thirty couples for every newborn mm -hmm. baby. Yes, yeah. right. Which is another reason it, why I don't it, like that argument. With right. Yes, it, it exactly. Gets, it gets harder as a child gets older, mm -hmm. obviously for for obvious reasons. But uh, I, I've always wondered how to unpack that. Like, should it be hard to adopt a, a child? Like, I think it should shouldn't it shouldn't be easy. Right. But the process should be maybe a little less bureaucratic, if that makes sense. But when you're dealing with the state. It, there's always going to be red tape that you have to get clear of and you have to vet people. But uh, yeah, that stat mm -hmm. was very interesting when I first heard it. Yeah. 30 couples oh, to yeah. a newborn baby. I didn't baby. know it was that many. I did oh, yeah. know that there are more couples that want to adopt than babies who need to be adopted. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I knew that, but I didn't know it was 30 to one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, your adoptive family is not black. No, they're white. They're, they're white. 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 Mm -hmm. Capital H. Or whitey. And successful. Right. So I benefited from their white privilege. Mm. Oh, uh -huh. okay. So yep. you're what they call an Oreo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And one thing that I think is really interesting about Shekinah is I think I'm getting this right. You were the first black person to ever graduate from your high school. Yep. Mm -hmm. My entire I graduated with... 38 people from a Christian private school, and I was the only black person to Wait, graduate. your senior class was 38 people? Mm -hmm. How many kids yep. total in the school? Well, was there it, probably Was it a about, K through high school, or was mm -hmm. it, oh, was, okay, yep. oh, wow. Yep, there were probably about 1,200 people in the entire school, but we just had a particularly small class because a lot of people left or got kicked out or whatever. Really? I kind of had a crazy class, but yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. so you were, I mean, Coming wow. from a progressive, you would be like the ideal person to talk about feeling racism or oh, feeling yeah. sort of bigotry. You would think so. You would think so. Did you ever feel like you were out of place or mistreated or treated differently growing up in an all white area? No. Out of place, though, probably a couple of times, right? Like, I mean, just optically. Yeah, I guess optically, yes, kind of. But honestly, just with the way that my parents raised me and the values that they instilled in me, I never really, I really never had that mindset. All I knew was that I wanted to work hard, get good grades, play instruments, and just do well in my life because that's what my parents expected of me. And so that's what I did. Did you graduate with the same people that you kind of started like kinder? Did you go to that school since a kindergarten? Lot of them. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you you had a pretty good uh, school unit there, people that you knew. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you go to college? One year. I went to college for one year mm -hmm. at ONU, Olivet Nazarene University. I got a scholarship for pipe organ, piano, and trumpet. And oh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Wait, yep. pipe organ? Yes. Like a Wur Wurlitzer? Yeah. Really? Like, that's they cool. Have a, they have an $11 million pipe organ that was imported from Italy in there that they built a chapel around, and I got to play it, and I got a scholarship to play it. 
because I started taking lessons in high school. Can so. you still can you still play it or have I you? I probably still could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's really really interesting. I didn't you know that. Like Bach. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, love- I played classical piano growing all, all my life until I was yep. twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's something that I wanted to talk to you about and have a lot of questions. I'm sure you know what it is. Your denomination, your mm-hmm. religious denomination. So tell people who don't know what your de- your religious denomination is. So when I was about five years old, my mom converted to Messianic Judaism and we started going to a synagogue in Denver, which is like probably 40 percent black, actually. So the synagogue itself or Denver? Yes, the synagogue itself. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Messianic Jew, Mm -hmm. not to be confused with black Israelite. Yes. (laughs) Still still a denomination of Christianity. Yes. What separates it from the rest? We celebrate the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. So we celebrate all of the biblical feast days and all that sort of thing. And um, Sabbath is another big one. And the dietary restrictions. Those are basically the biggest things. So you guys are Christian in belief Mm -hmm. and Jewish in practice. We still believe in Yeshua, but yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. So wait, what are are the, um, what are the laws uh, are they the Deuteronomic laws or, or the um, the laws that are like Levitical laws? Levitical laws. Mm-hmm. Do you follow those? Yep. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Or as much as they can be applied to today? Because mm-hmm. I mean, do you mix fabrics? No. Oh, no. really? Which is actually really not hard because it's just linen and um, wool that you can't mix. Okay. And most clothes aren't mixed yeah. with that together. And in let it, me ask so. you a question because mm-hmm. this is what I heard. I heard in the context of the time when they say don't mix, you know, don't mix fabrics or don't mix materials. It had to do more with the mixing of tribes because certain tribes would wear one material, other tribes would wear another one. So that's what I heard. It was kind of like don't mix people. It's not necessarily like don't mix linen. I don't know. Is that right? Bryson no. says no. No? That's what I heard. Well, actually, it's kind of interesting because there's actually a scientific reasoning behind why they don't mix the two fabrics. Okay, and it what, actually, what is that? So your body, when you wear linen, you actually, your the static in your body decreases mm-hmm. when you wear linen and the wool kind of increases your heat temperature and it throws off the electrical balance within your body. Okay. And so that's one of the biggest reasons why Jews still don't mix fabrics. But Really? Dr. Charlie needs to get on that. Oh. Oh, and yeah. you guys don't eat pork. And nope. the more science and research that comes out about pork says it's really just all, almost a, a useless food. It's it's actually not even just useless. It's bad for you. Yeah, actually, my dad was having severe health issues with his blood pressure. And once once he quit eating pork, he was actually changed a lot. His mm-hmm. body changed a lot. Yeah, it's really different than beef. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, that's it's not the same with beef. beef. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I, I like bacon and I know that's the big it's one. Really the only, it's really the, the only bacon. pork that I that I really eat. Not like loin or anything, but just bacon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the only one that the we most, still like eat sometimes. Easily too. parable uh breakfast protein, like source mm-hmm. of protein other than my eggs. It's been bacon. Yeah. I'd say it's more of a fat, but yeah, yeah. it yeah. probably it still is protein. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So what else? What are the other Levitical laws that you follow? The well, obviously the dietary ones and then the Ten Commandments are the biggest ones. I mean, that's like right. the foundational principles is the Ten Commandments and the 613 principles kind of go within that. But there are a lot of ceremonial laws that really can't be practiced because there's not a temple anymore. And the Bible actually says that. So there's a lot of things that can't be practiced within the little Levitical laws because they're all ceremonial. So mm. there's only really like 10% of them that are actually applicable to us so yeah what about the bible uh what 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 uh tra- or what uh version of the bible do you guys read so a lot of people in our congregation either read king james version of the bible or mm-hmm. the complete jewish version of the bible but if you're looking for a more like accurate in terms of what's been taken out or what words have been changed i think um n a s b new is, american standard yeah, yeah new american standard yeah is normally the one that people have started to go with and they that's what they say is more accurate how far so. back does the messianic jew go like to the beginning of like how far back like right after christ or what mm-hmm. so just jews who converted but who kept aspects of judaism but well then they can't are they I'm very I'm I'm having a, a hard time wrapping my head around are they Jewish or are they Christian? Well, Bryson says all the time, did God change his mind? When are you talking about the laws? And so that that's that's a question. It's like the new covenant that Christ brought, does that necessarily mean that all of the laws prior to Christ are suddenly just like out the window. Oh, got you. Mm-hmm. Right. And so Bryson is shaking his head. No, that's it. so he always I always see on Twitter, he said, Okay, so did God change his mind? Right. 
Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you guys go to a synagogue here? Have you found one here? So there's actually a place called Mercy Collective that we really enjoy. And the head, I don't know if he calls himself rabbi. I don't know if he does. But he actually knows our rabbi that's in Colorado. We have 64 different centers. So and about over 100 countries watch our lives like when we have our services on Saturdays. And so we know him and he's really cool. We really like that congregation a lot. The population of the Messianic Jews, like how many do you think there are? There's actually worldwide, you think there's actually more than you would realize because there are a lot of even Christians that I would. Well, not a lot, but I think they're becoming more Christians that are following more of the messianic, you know, traditions. But overall, I'm not really sure. Is there I know, a big concentration of them anywhere in the world? Yes, absolutely. Russia is a huge one. Oh, really? Yes. There are so that. many Russians. Ethiopians are also huge, really? huge, huge. Nigerians are also huge. We have a whole group of Nigerians that are a part of it, wow. too. Yeah. Oh, interesting. What does it say, Gina? There are approximately 175,000 to 250,000 Messianic Jews in the U.S. and 350,000 okay. worldwide. That sounds That's like low. that sounds really low. That yeah. can't be right. Yeah, that can't be right. <laughs> you hear Bryson <laughs> seething in the background like there are more of us. We will continue to get bigger. I mean, you guys are the first Messianic Jews I've ever met. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was literally one of the there's me and one other person that was a grade above me that was a messianic jew but there were 70 different denominations in my mm -hmm. private school when i was growing up so there were a lot of differences when but. she told me that about you and bryson i was like oh they're black israelites okay <laughs> was, that's very intimidating because they're usually not nice yeah, yeah. People, people think bryson <laughs> people is. is for sure <laughs> yeah wow yeah. okay mm -hmm. was there anything else that you wanted to ask about it about messianic judaism yeah i don't know i feel like i feel like i would just have to delve deeper into it because those are the two questions off the top of my head like do you guys follow the levitical laws and what separates you from other dom denominations of christianity yeah which you basically covered the one thing that i'm still wrapping my head around though is you know can 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 one be called and i'm sure he's gonna you know you know be kind of like shaking in his chair like wanting to answer we, we could talk about it later but um just the 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 true nature of of it like how true to christianity can it be if it's incorporating judaism in it well actually the original just a question yeah so like the original disciples were jews right. they were jews and it's honestly constantine is one of the biggest people that actually changed Emperor christianity constantine? wow yeah, he was one of the biggest people that changed Christianity. He changed the date of when we go to church. So mm -hmm. it's instead of Saturdays, it's on Sunday because mm -hmm. of him. Our entire Gregorian calendar is actually pagan. It's all based off of pagan gods and symbols and like Saturn, Saturday, right. moon, oh. moon day. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that he actually incorporated with paganism, like Greek Hellenism and paganism. Yeah. Okay. I had a question in my head. Now it's gone. Okay. So I'll get you, it back. You, you guys, guys have talked talking. about how Christmas is a pagan holiday. Yeah. Tell me more about that. So Christmas is actually, they actually centered the birth of Jesus around the winter solstice, which is a pagan, is a pagan like idea that came from the Greeks and Romans. And the birth of Christ was actually not even during Christmas. They say it was normally during like um, Sukkot, which is in like September. September, September so it's. A different time and then also the christmas tree is another huge huge debate um amongst like christians and people that don't have christmas trees and a lot of people go back to jeremiah 10 because it, it actually talks directly about the christmas tree and um the ornaments on a christmas tree and that's one of the biggest reasons why jews do not put up christmas trees so, oh, so okay so here's a question because you seem very literate in the bible Who's more literate, you or Bryson? Bryson. Bryson, okay. for sure. Now, this is, this, is probably, this is probably a question that you know. I just found this out. The Apostle James, mm -hmm. was that Jesus' brother? Oh, yes. Is that his blood brother? Because That's he a good question. Because I, I was listening to uh, Cliff Nettle, you know, Ask Cliff, and uh, his son was talking about um, how a lot of, they were talking about the resurrection of Christ mm -hmm. and the evidence for the resurrection and how many people converted immediately after seeing Christ rise from the dead because they had their doubts. They were like, He's, right. he can't be the Messiah. But then right. when they saw him, and and James, he was talking about James. He's like, this is my brother. I've grown up with him. I've, I've peed in the same pot as him. There's no way he's the Messiah. And then when he sees Christ risen from the dead, he's, he says, oh my God, change his whole tune and then dies for it. But mm -hmm. he said the way that Cliff talked about James was saying that he's his brother. So I'm wondering if he's like actually like Joseph and Mary's actual like birth son you know 
Uh, see, do you know? I don't know. That's a good question, though. Bryson? Do you know Bryce? So the Bible does refer to James. Look like, it up while he's looking. Like Jesus' brother. Yeah. He like verbatim refers to it, but uh, a lot of people say it's not literal. He means like. Like, so, like you're my brother. Yeah. Okay, so, got you. So, so that's what people say, but it is eerie the way it is referred because if you, if you read the Bible a lot, it doesn't it doesn't really refer to other people the same way. Okay, got you. I don't know. The apostles, the the apostles and the disciples are so fascinating. It was who is who was the uh, the the was it Paul the apostle Paul was 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 a uh, a bounty hunter of Christians. You know, he would He's, capture Christians and. Mm. Yeah, he was actually not originally Jewish at all. Yeah, he <laughs> was he was like a Ro- was like a Rome part of the Roman. I'm pretty sure. Right, that's yeah. right. He was Saul, right. Mm-hmm. And then he became Paul. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. How do you convert to Messianic Judaism? Yeah, what's the process like? Well, for us, we just we just really changed our <coughs> lifestyle. That was really the biggest thing is like changing our lifestyle. And my mom got into it before my dad. So my dad actually got into it later. Mm -hmm. And my mom just kind of like took a leap of faith and started going to the congregation that we're going to. And he just like loves it now. He absolutely loves it. But we and the biggest other big thing is the feast days. We celebrate all the feast days and those are super fun. We celebrate Hanukkah and we celebrate um, Yom Kippur, Shavuot, all of those. Really? Do you speak any Hebrew? Like barely. Um, I have a lot of friends that do. They yeah. speak very fluent Hebrew, but oh, I I know like certain <clears throat> prayers in Hebrew, but that's about it. So you were born in Mississippi, but you lived and were raised in Colorado. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do they have bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs and all that? Yes. I actually had mine in Israel. I got baptized in Israel as well. You mentioned that to me last time mm-hmm. you guys were over for Where? dinner. Now I remember River. that. Oh, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. It was such a cool experience. Wow. It was so cool. I went to Israel and I I, I was on the um, <laughs> the river. Oh, yeah. It was the river he walked on. <laughs> this man, where did he walk? On the water. That's, that's not your best. <laughs> no, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Israeli? Israeli is tough. Israeli is a really hard one. I think that's one of the toughest ones. It's very one. tough. Wait, what was the, did he walk on the River Jordan or did he walk on the River? Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee. That's yes. where I, we and took a we boat ride down to, the Sea of Galilee. We got to take a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee too. And we got to dance. And they dance. Like, yeah, wow. they dance. And they have so food cool. on there for you. It's pretty fun. Yeah, we went to the Dead Sea too. And the Dead. what's interesting about the Dead Sea is the salt content is so high that you cannot sink. Yeah. You can't sink. And there's no living creatures in it because it's so salty. Well, that's what isolation tanks are. They're filled, yep. with, they're filled with salt. Do mm-hmm. Jews, not Messianic Jews, do Jews, they think that they think that Christ was just crazy or they think that he was a prophet and just wasn't the son of God. What do they think about Jesus? Muslims, 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 he's a prophet in the, in the Islamic exactly. faith. Exactly. Yeah. He's not I know that. God, yeah. So I don't know. Bryson? <laughs> or is it like very by Jewish denomination or whatever? No, I was like, Muslims believe Jesus is the Messiah. Though. Yeah. They just don't believe he was the son of God and they don't think God can have a son. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, interesting. And then Muhammad came after Jesus. So Muhammad was just the messenger. I'm just holding okay. it. Muhammad was just the messenger uh, to bring them the Quran. So the, the, the Quran actually mentions Jesus more than it mentions Muhammad. So Muhammad is not mm-hmm. the Messiah right. to them. People always get confused. Jesus is the Messiah for Muslims. Uh, but they do believe that Muhammad brought them the, the word of God, which is the Quran. Wow. So now we're going to get canceled by Muslims. Oh, goodness gracious. (laughs) Yeah, there was a video that, was it PragerU? Somebody shared of like all the, at an anti-abortion rally, they were kicking around the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I commented something like, do that to a Quran and see what happens. Do you know what I mean? Because Muslims would not tolerate that. I was was saying this to Gina. I was was saying this the other day. A friend friend and I, uh, a Palestinian friend who I used to work with in New York, we, when I share memes, especially about transgenderism or just anything going on culturally, he agrees with them and laughs at them. And I was, I was, I was saying to myself, wow, like conservative Christians in America have a lot in common with conservative Muslims in America. It's kind of interesting. I never thought that we would ever like. Yeah, well, the real about, conservative ones. You know, right, right. The only difference is in the actual religion. But he was like, I would never send my child to a school where they told him he was a boy or a girl. If oh, yeah, he wasn't. They, they don't. There was actually wasn't there a school, Bryson? There was a school in New York that they tried to do that in and they all left the school and had to shut it down. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was a Muslim like majority school. And they tried to they started to try that. And literally all of them took their kids out. And how about you just teach kids how to, how to add? See, this yeah, is why yeah. maybe 
This is why, like, Ajak, when he was on here, he tweets all the time. He was like, 90% of the things that conservative Christians allow ha- to happen, none of it would fly with Muslims. No. None of it. No, no way. Yeah, no. No way. I mean, Definitely. so that video of, like, the kids, like, kicking around the Bible and stuff, I'm looking at that, I'm like, go ahead, try that with the Quran and see what happens. I mean, Israeli say, ah, mm. try that with Quran. I bet you can't do it. You know? <laughs> try that with the Quran. <laughs> That's it. When you do the Israeli, you have to kind of put your tongue under your mouth. There's lots under. of like, uh, huh. under. Yeah. Huh. yes. Oh, or yes. You, yeah, right. you just yes. watch, what was the uh, what mm-hmm. was the Adam Sandler movie where he plays the Mossad agent? <laughs> Don't mess with the Zohan. The Zohan. Zohan, come here, man. I sell you my cell phone, That's man. it. That's it. All right, Sony. <laughs> I love Israeli people. I like how they're really intense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Inti- it's kind of funny because a lot of Americans would think they're super rude. They're the Italians yes. of the Middle East. I, I like a lot of people would think but they're But I like, I like them because th- their bluntness is mistaken for rudeness but oh, yeah. they're not rude they're just blunt they're just very I, blunt i appreciate that oh just, yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah bombing schools yeah. <laughs> um another thing that we have talked about kind of on our own is trad mm-hmm. what trad has become so we talked about this a little bit with morgan zeggers mm-hmm. um how the term trad has become a caricature amongst the conservative like, even the conservative christian circle and it, it and it's become like I said, a caricature of what a woman should be in the relationship that she has, not only with her husband, but in society. And it's become like this 1950s housewife who doesn't have a voice ever in society, doesn't participate in the economy. And all she does is just stay home and only tend to the kids. And that's it. And you and I were kind of talking about this because we're both critical of it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Well, yeah, I absolutely love the like the idea of traditional values, like and being there for your children. Like, I don't think anything should trump taking care of your children and taking care of your husband. So the essence of that is amazing. And I think there are a lot of good women that just show their lifestyle from home and like what they actually do and what they actually value. Like Lexi James and Soli, they're great examples of what they just do in everyday life. But I do think that a lot of it just becomes a little bit of a caricature sometimes. And could also just be man seeking. Yeah, because I don't I don't think it's wrong for a woman to pursue her passions as long as it doesn't overshadow her duties as a wife and as a mother. Mm-hmm. And I think that's okay. Now, I don't I wouldn't go suggesting to go out and get a job necessarily that's like 9 to 5 because mm-hmm. I don't think that you can choose a career and choose your children mm-hmm. if, if you're you planning on kids, work. this is if you have kids already yeah if you have kids already right. and you're deciding that like they're your first priority yeah. i don't think i literally don't think it's possible or feasible mm-hmm. for you to be the full-time parent influencing your children the most and working a full-time job in a cubicle i don't wouldn't suggest that but i think there's a lot of ways to participate in the economy from home especially for women and there are a lot of ways that women can still do a lot of like Great things for society and for the economy from home mm-hmm. and from different areas. Of life. Or from so, a family unit. Or from a family unit. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like I know so many like women that do things from home. They, they have passions and they do them from home and they're mm-hmm. still like tending to their kids and there's still an important role. They haven't lost the essence of it. But yeah. Yeah. And it, but it's it's it is weird how we've gotten to the point where even some conservative Christians will be like, why are women on the Internet? Yeah. Or you shouldn't be doing anything else. Like you shouldn't have any sort of side hustle or you shouldn't have any sort of online business from home if you have kids. Yeah. And then I also asked a question like to those people, I'm like, well, what happens when the child turns 18 or the children turn 18 and they leave the home? What is the woman supposed to do that? She's just supposed to stay home and vacuum all day. I mean, I, you I forgot. Was it in Proverbs where a woman is, is supposed to contribute to yeah. society? Like you can absolutely contribute without like losing your values and mm-hmm. losing the value of your children what your ch- you want your children to learn cuz like i plan to homeschool my kids and i don't i think we've gotten to a place where this is like a counter response to what's happening now because quite honestly most parents aren't raising their children mm-hmm. they're letting someone else raise them they're taking them to daycare full time they are doing all these different things that are allowing other people to raise them except for their except for them. Mm-hmm. And so I do see the counter side to it. And I understand, obviously, I'm more sided with them because I think their values are totally different from the other side. But yeah. I've never understood yeah. the daycare thing. Yeah. Never. I, I never still don't understand daycare. the daycare thing. No. Either. That was never a thing for me. Or my aunt. I think daycare is wrong. They, me too. They were daycare. Wrong. Like we, and, and because we knew couples where both, where both the husband and wife worked. 
Um, so it'd be like during the summer, like, oh, we're going to drop off so-and-so. Oh, they're coming over to hang out. Like we didn't realize, oh, like we're kind of the daycare. Didn't realize that. Yeah, I tweeted the other day. I said, stop paying other people to raise your kids. Right. And that's and, and that goes back to what you said about women who work a nine to five office job. They're out of the house eight hours a day. You're not you're not able to raise your kids. You now, can't. I, I had a couple people respond and be like, you have no idea how hard it is to live on one income. I'm a teacher. My wife is it works in HR. And I'm like. You, Find a better job. You dude. know how many families make it work? I mean, I, I have some followers who have like five or six kids and they live on a $30,000 yes. income. It's not yeah, impossible. It's, it's not just impossible. society. It's not easy, it's not <laughs> easy but no. it's not no, impossible. It's society, not easy, it, it is, it's almost like a psyop. Society has convinced women. I would even go as far as brainwashed both men and women to believe that you cannot make it in this country unless you're living on a two income household. Right. And I think it's been really detrimental. I mean, even I even know some conservative people who they literally just pay other people to take care of their kids all day long and then they go out and they get on a microphone and they talk about family values and raising their own kids and i'm like it's just it's it, it's it's not it's not what is supposed to be done and this whole idea of daycare like sending off your child to be raised by strangers for like no. 10 hours a day i mean i know it's it may be offensive to some but i find daycare to be asinine and then even going back to like this idea of public school, private school, whatever kind of school, just the idea of sending your child to learn from strangers for eight hours a day, just like one or two short generations ago would have been, it would have been psychotic talk. You like, you would have heard them like, are you crazy letting my kid go to some strangers from eight to three or however long kids are in school and just learning from these random people? Why? Because they have some sort of degree. Look up yeah. the average, the average school day in length in 1950. I'm curious because I'm, I'm saying like this, this probably a recent thing. And when I say recent, I say within the last hundred years or so. Um, because, average school day what? Uh, 1950. Okay. How long was the average school day in 1950? Because you had like, what, 10 to 20 students, if I'm thinking of rural Massachusetts in 1785 or something like that, you know what I mean? With one teacher and she kind of, you know, stayed with them. I don't, I just don't know if it's all day, a couple hours a day, because those kids got to get back home and work. You know, what was the point of having a lot of kids back in the day? Labor. Like you, so, you need the help on the farm. Yes. What I'm seeing is that it's very similar. You start at 8 or 8.30 and yeah. then they leave around 3 or 3.30. Yeah, I would say that this is, you know, something that started obviously um, in the last hundred years or so. Because you think about the Industrial Revolution, a lot of child labor. So if they weren't going to school, they were working right. in factories. Oh, yeah. 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 Which, working in a factory, probably better. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's just it, it is crazy. And now you are you're seen as the weird one if you want to teach your kids yourself. But oh, I yeah. actually think going back to what I said, I, I do think it, it is kind of a punk rock countercultural thing now to homeschool. And it's becoming more and more popular because it's so oh, countercultural. Yeah. And if anything, COVID did us a favor. Oh, yeah. There's so many people that actually decided to pay attention to what their kids are learning mm -hmm. and pulled them out. Like, see, my mom, my mom was she was crazy about who was teaching me and who was involved in my life and who my teachers were and what my education was and who I was learning from. And you don't see that as much anymore. They just throw you to school and they just let you do whatever, you know, they just do whatever and they go to school what, and they have no idea what they're one learning. One parent teacher conference yeah. a semester or something like that. And that's about it. And it's like, it's like parents have forgotten like to be involved, be involved in what your kids are learning. That's important. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if you have certain values that you want your kids, that you want to be instilled in your kids, you wonder why they're being given over to the world and to leftism. Well, mm -hmm. they're homeschooling groups, right? Because I always thought of the yeah. idea of like, okay, it might be a little bit intimidating to actually like, you know, teach your kid, especially by yourself. But I'm wondering if they're like homeschooling groups where the moms get together and kind of- There oh, are yeah. so huge curriculum. communities. Yeah. Here okay. in Tennessee, where we are, this area has a lot of homeschooling resources. So my physical therapist, he's got, uh, he and his wife have an 11 year old and a six year old. And his 11 year old, they're both homeschooled, have been homeschooled since day one. She goes to a tutorial, right? which mm -hmm. is basically, it's a classroom setting. She goes once a week and they go with other homeschooled kids. Really? And they mm -hmm. learn one particular subject that maybe the parents don't feel fully confident teaching. Gotcha. But it's one of those things where the parents go with them and oh. it's a small group and the kids get to socialize, they hang out. Right. So at least this area here, there's, I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg for resources. There's right, a lot right, of right. Oh, yeah. different types of homeschool get togethers and they have extracurricular activities. Yes. So this whole idea of homeschool kids being socially awkward is just, it's, it's a very it's outdated a thing. It is. Because they want you to stay in the public school system. 
They do. And I, I, you know, I do, I do feel bad. I know there are a lot of families out there with moms, probably some listening moms who wish they didn't have to work and wish they could be home with their kids and homeschool their kids. But, um, I just, I really, I do not accept this argument of, well, we can't make it on one, one income. I don't accept that because I really think it's society just convincing you because they want your kids in school. They want you having two incomes to, you know, contribute to the economy and, and make other people richer. Like, I think it is possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. Yeah. yeah. I know that's probably right. Well, you know, what kind of, you know, what kind of but. sucks is because wherever you live, especially if you own your house or even if you pay rent, because whoever owns that house has to pay property taxes, but the property taxes go to fund the public school. So it's like, okay, if I'm getting paid for something, I might as well, if I'm giving my money to something, I might as well use the service that I'm provided. But the service nine times out of 10 sucks. It's awful. It's, it's ran by unions that, 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 the people involved can't be fired, uh, no matter what type of um, parent resources you have. You know, you're not. It's not. It's not a public school. It's state school. If it was a public school, the public would have more of a say in it, right? But parents don't. And the amount of money that, like, listen, like on Long Island, where the median, uh, look up median property tax, Long Island. I'm probably gonna say it's somewhere between nine and twelve thousand dollars because I know how much my parents pay and know how much my in laws paid it. At a, at a certain point. So it's an absorbent. That's one family. That's one house where the property taxes are probably between nine and twelve thousand dollars a year on the low end. What are you getting? It, it's not giving me an amount. It's just average. Saying. Type in average instead of median. OK, that should work. In the meantime, I want to think. Oh, I actually do want to say something. In the meantime, we are going to be starting with a new sponsor uh, very soon, a very exciting one. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, what does it say? Gina? It just says two point two four percent. Of what? Yeah, it doesn't give me it doesn't give me an amount. Sorry. Really? Yeah. Type this in. Type average Maybe. property tax for Old Westbury, New York. W E S T B U R Y. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, what was your guess again? For is this for Old Westbury? Yes. Or is this, oh, Old Westbury. No, this is for Long Island. I found one for Long Island. What, okay, what's your guess I'm going to say between nine and twelve thousand dollars. Eleven. The average. Okay. Eleven thousand wow. per year in property taxes on average. Do you know what it is in Tennessee? It's yeah. probably like fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars per year. Right. Yeah. Huh. That's fine. It's, he can leave me. I'm not going to get on. Yeah. yeah. That's right around the corner. The faster you do it, the better. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, I hope we didn't upset a lot of moms by saying that. But I know I upset a lot. No, of them. you know what? And they're probably <laughs> thinking hard. that too. Probably I know it's hard. And I mean, I, and we don't say this in a way to, to condemn or criticize, no. but it, it, it's what it is, is an encouragement to be as much involved in your children's life as possible. Right. Yeah. We've talked about this before a couple of times. I mean, we've had them both on Robbie Starbuck and his wife, Landon. Mm -hmm. None of their kids have social media and they're both like very, very, very involved with their kids' lives. Yeah. And it shows their oldest daughter is 13 and she's so innocent. She's like, she's a child. She's, she's still like an actual child. She's like an actual child. Mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, she's really, she reads a lot. She speaks so well to adults and yeah. it's like having a conversation conversation with her is like having a conversation with a really smart 13 year old kid you know not some crazy child who's been on tiktok all day long and it right. makes a massive difference if you can just spend as much time with your kids as possible yeah have you ever heard of gentle parenting i think i have you don't spank them yeah and you let them do what's best for them and then you go off that they'll the so yeah i what's know what's the point of the parents then yeah so they'll be like what do you want for dinner oh my do you want gosh, something for even. dinner yeah um, craziness well yeah and this is listen pre present company uh included and not excluded but uh you know especially for the ladies out there if, you, if you're having you know trouble uh you know thinking that you need to go work because you think there's a certain amount of money needs to be made or two parents need to be working two income household tell your man and this is something that you know i need to do, do tell your man to step it up yeah that's the provider that is someone who needs to make you feel comfortable and something that I got to work on. And as well. learn how to grow your own food. That's a really big one. I mean, learn how to grow your own food. Um, Broccoli. And, and 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 take take out all of the additional Cabbage. expenses that you don't need. I yeah, mean, that's what I've started to do. That's why I, that's one reason why I have my baking page is because like I want people to learn how to make stuff on their own from scratch. You can do it and you can order the ingredients you want. You don't have to use the garbage that you see. It may be more difficult, but that's like sacrifice. You be using that artificial sugar. 
I like I try to stay away from it as much as I can. And there's a lot of alternatives. What's and alternative your favorite sweetener? Uh, sweet, what's your favorite sweetener uh, alternative? Natural I like, one. I like monk fruit sweetener. I think okay. it's a good one. That's I think one. I love honey, obviously. Any type of honey. I, I love. Can't, I can't have any of it. Yeah. And maple um, syrup too. Maple how syrup do you, is a good uh, one too. Carly likes dates. She dates likes are great. I love, date. yeah. I love dates. What she does is she puts a date in a tiny bowl and you, then either it's usually after and sugar but she puts a date in a tiny bowl microwaves it and then puts a little bit of tahini on top of it yeah mm. that's a good one is it that's a really good that's one known yeah i, I she mean, was the only I, person that did it i used to do that with tahini and then sometimes if i was feeling a little bit naughty i dip it in dark chocolate <laughs> dates are a biblical fruit are they not i think they are i think they're in the Bible. dates and olives and mm -hmm. oh yeah. no figs yeah, i sure. might be thinking oh yeah figs. Figs. we have a fig yeah. tree that's oh it. yeah yeah Mm, things oh, are nice. Cool. I don't think I've ever had. Oh, things hey, here's nice. a question. Oh, do you like cantaloupe? I'm not the biggest fan of cantaloupe, and I love. Do you fruit. like watermelon better, Bryson? Raisin. Do you like cantaloupe? I well, I mean, you're black, so you definitely eat watermelon. watermelon. You don't he even like watermelon? like watermelon. Well, mm -hmm. he's also a super taster. A super taster. He Wait, what's eat that? Anything? A it's, super taster. It's I didn't think that it was someone real. Came up with to victimize people <laughs> that are just picky and don't eat stuff. Really yeah. So no. What you just taste <laughs> stuff, okay. or you just you, they they taste stuff. They have more taste buds than the average person. I think is what it is. So wouldn't their more palates be wider? Taste? So this is how this is this is how I learned about Bryson's uh, <laughs> super taster um, disability. So <laughs> he came to my house when we were still living in Northern Virginia. And I think a bunch of people were in the DC area for some sort of rally. And he came over with his mom. The KKK rally. In the, <laughs> very likely. Yeah. And he came with his mom and I forgot what we made for dinner, but he came in and he was just very matter of factly like, I don't eat that. He was like, I can't eat a lot of stuff. And we were like, what do you mean? So apparently super tasters like Bryson, have such a heightened taste, a heightened sense of taste that if they eat something that has like, let's say like chuck roast, I think we made something like chuck roast okay. and you put some onion in the pot to give it a little bit of flavor. Right. Even if you can't see the onion, he can taste it right away and he can't eat it. So you like as bland as possible. This is what I'm right? like. Yeah. Yes, this is what Bryson eats. He eats macaroni and cheese. I know this because every single time he comes over to our house, we make mac and cheese. Okay. He eats chicken, fried chicken, chicken Alfredo, chicken. He eats pizza, steak, but all of, but steak. all of these things have spices underneath it. Like that, no, no, he doesn't have them with the spices. He only eats steak, and this is the you gravest. You can't make fried chicken without spices, though. Paprika, that's garlic true. powder, salt, pepper. It's not spices. That's like spicy, though. No, he, he doesn't. Yeah, but even that onion, but even like onion powder things. is a spice. Onion powder technically is spice, but that's different. You, you're sensitive to certain things. So I can eat. I only eat anything spicy. Anything spicy, right. I won't eat it. Like hot fries, I've never even ate. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that's who you Let's got. see what else. Oh, he eats broccoli. He likes so, broccoli. And he so eats rice. A... So when he came over to my house, you know, we're Asian. We always have rice in the fridge. So my mom brought out rice and steamed some broccoli for him and yeah. he ate that. But what else does he You'd eat? You'd probably like a uh, bone broth rice. It's what I've been eating with my meat recently. I don't think he would like bone broth. Yeah, I can yeah, see it on his you would put a no. chicken. You just, if you're making chicken soup. It's the bone, soup. bone broth is like it's very animally though, it is, especially it is, for people who have heightened taste. You can look at his I'll face. I'll tell you, you what though, it. it's good. It's so the, good. The last batch that my wife made was really, really good. Yeah, my the daughter first one was a little bland. Too. This, the this this new one, perfect. Yeah, bone really broth good. is great. I like the bone broth. Uh, here's a question: Do you like pitbulls? Not particularly. Oh, okay. well, I don't really have anything necessarily. In a while. I've, I don't really have necessarily anything against pit bulls, though. I like dogs. Grown I man. love dogs. You like pit bulls? Oh, he no. No. He's black. Like you said you said something like that. My sandwich. I'm saying it right back. No pit, pit bulls. bulls. Oh, talking about dogs? Yes. I don't like animals. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That, that's a different. <laughs> that's a different. That's, that's, different. that's, that's an acceptable like response. Fine. That's consistent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, what did you think he asked? Like pickles. 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 Oh, pickles. Oh, pickles. Oh, pickles. What about a pit bull named Pickle? <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? That's Shekinah? actually a really what? cute name for a pit bull. It is. Uh, while you're here, has there been anything on your mind recently or, you know, anything in the news that you've seen where you just wanted to talk about in mm. front of an audience of people? Well, mm. I, I really hate. Especially on a declining hate, show like ours. I hate this, like, white privilege notion. <laughs> It really it irks me. It's probably one of the least favorite things ever. This victimhood thing where black people are like, it's just so tough. Like I watched this girl that got 5,000 likes on this reel and she was saying, you know, it's tough for all of us. You know, we're just going through all of these, all of these white supremacist things and all these microaggressions. And we have to come together and pray about it and stuff like that. And I'm just like, why? 
what a punk thing. Like you have to be such a punk to like be such a victim. And she was well-dressed living in a nice apartment. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And she was a minority. Yes. She was black. And you know what else drives me crazy? There's this girl. I can't remember her name. Uh, Jasmine Sullivan, she was literally on stage receiving a BET award. And she was talking about how I'm doing this for all my sisters because we got it rough out here. And I'm like, you're wearing Christian Louboutins. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like you have the best life ever. Your weave is probably more than most people's like monthly groceries. Like, no. Yeah. And what's a weave? Oh, oh my gosh, Michael. Something that I do not support, including bonnets in public. You Sorry, can laugh black louder. Just no. so there's like a laugh track. Wait, wait a second. This what is you... very controversial amongst the black community. Don't wear bonnets outside of the house. Gosh. Wait, wait, what? Okay, hold a on. Bonnet? Wait, 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 wait. What's the <laughs> like Nation of Islam? What's the purpose of a bonnet? So bonnets are normally made with satin or silk, and it helps your hair from like, uh, like the shower the friction. Cap. Kind of. I wear one to bed. A shower cap is normally like plastic, but like these are like silton or satin, silk or satin. I can't talk. Um, and you wear it to bed so that there's no friction. Your hair doesn't break off. You get on waves. The cotton. So it doesn't break off. Oh, mm -hmm. like yeah. A do -rag. And black women wear them in public and go on the airplanes with them for no reason. You don't need to wear bonnet Wait, in okay, public. But they look like, can you, can you find one and oh, just show it to me? You don't know what they look it? like? No. I wore a do rag. There's a there's a picture of me in senior year of high school. I was wearing a do rag. I had my hair shorter, so I literally did get waves. That's so racist, man. No, but my hair's thick. <laughs> Touch my hair and tell me it's not thick. <laughs> do it. It's thick. Right? I mean, it's thick. Yeah. Right. So you yeah. Can I got waves, man. <laughs> Here's a satin bonnet on, for sale on Amazon. Yeah, you lost See, your bonnet. Wait, but okay. that looks. I'll put that up here. Where where uh, I'll put it right here. What a bonnet is. But that that looks almost like a fashion thing, no, like a hat. So no, that's not a hat. It has no, a function no, no, no. that that happens while you sleep. Yeah, that's yeah. why you sleep. That's what we call ratchetry. Ratchet. Oh, I'm gonna get ratchet. killed for that. But ratchetry. <laughs> Bryce's whole family is ratchet. <laughs> really? I mean, I don't I know. I just think it's so funny. <laughs> you guys know I have black family too. What? I have black family members. Yeah. Oh, seriously? Yes. By marriage. My my mom's sister, my aunt, married a black guy. That Uncle Charles, their their kids are half Salvadorian, half black. Now, the uh, my cousin, my one cousin, uh, had had three kids with a black dude. So they're they're three, quarter, three quarters, three quarters and a quarter. Yeah, so okay. they're three quarters black. So my cousins, that side of the family. Wow. And remember, growing up in New York, it's pretty much all I was surrounded by were you know my cousins. Uh, going to cookouts and stuff like that. But I also had some white friends. Didn't really get a lot of those till later. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. But Wait, I don't know what a bonnet is. This is what I remember I wanted to ask you about. You are against weaves. Weave. Yeah. Is, is, is weaves, is that the plural or is it like, weave. or is it like deer? It's weave. Like weave, okay. Weave apostrophe <laughs> S. No, that, that <laughs> ownership, like my weaves is doing this. Okay. Yeah, I'm also going to get killed for this. But I think black women should grow their hair out naturally because it's already more difficult. So it's a flex to have long, natural hair. And I also just think it's better in general just to have your natural hair because a lot of times you can see the net. And yeah, it's just not for me personally. If yeah. anything, not you're like, wear. you're you're almost like legit, like black power. <laughs> legit black power. Yeah. <laughs> grow your own hair. That's actually what a lot of the pro-blacks say. Don't wear your bonnet. Grow your own Raise hair. your kids. Right? Yeah, Candace has her natural hair, and I always think it yes. looks so pretty on her. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and you I can mean, grow it out. The good ones you can't tell, right? How much? I hear I hear that black women spend a lot of money on these things. Yes. Well, uh, hey, well, hold on a second. To that, that is a cultural difference. So wow. another really interesting cultural difference between American-born black individuals versus black immigrants. Yeah. They have really different spending habits down to yes. nails, hair, outfits, accessories. Really? It's actually very a, a really interesting difference. So what, what's yes. the difference there that so black the immigrants don't spend as much on that's correct. outward oh, absolutely. appearances? That's well, right. And that's just in in general and it's an unfortunate reality but black people do spend way more money on things that mm -hmm. the average person doesn't spend for example the average like median household income of a white family they're driving a toyota and the average median income of a black family they're driving a mercedes things like that where you and get, where you get those statistics from you can actually look them up from you get the them from donaldtrump.com no some fake stuff no but fake seriously news. they infowars um 
What's his name? Dr. Umar talks about this. Really? Yes. Oh. Here's the thing. Yes. Dr. Umar, if you're watching, if you ever watch, I, I, we, I'd love to have you. I'd love to have you on the show. I think I think you're a really interesting dude who has some very interesting takes. Where and does I would he like live? to talk to you. He's in Atlanta. Atlanta? Of course yeah. he is. Um, Dr. Umar or Killer Mike. Um, I have Killer Mike's number. Oh, man. We should get him on the show. Be like, hey, you performing in Nashville? He was every time I talked to him, he's really nice. Maybe he yeah. might. I, I'll text him. And they see would if they he... would disagree with us. I think in part almost because because here's the thing. Doctor Umar was talking very passionately about why Planned Parenthood was started. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, they would disagree with us on on the on the slavery aspect and abortion, but they would probably not deny the significance of Planned Parenthood being a eugenics front. Right. Right. Like so, it, I, th there would be common ground there. Yeah, but I the think. video that you sent me. Umar Johnson is still against the overturning of Roe versus Wade because right. he the thinks conspiracy that it, that it's going to that, that no even more than that he thinks that what it's going to do is put more black kids in the adoption or foster system that will then be like quote bought by white parents oh, and that's what he's oh, against gotcha, gotcha, which gotcha. like I don't understand why. I don't understand why, if that's no your offense. concern, why wouldn't you just promote more family values in the black community and yeah. keep their own but, kids? But they do. Yeah. But he does. So he, he's like, he's like the people. He definitely does way more than most of these people, yeah. especially in the media. Umar Johnson. And Reza Mike, Islam you know. is another one that I would much rather listen to than Reza Aslan or who? Reza Islam. Who's that? He's actually a really popular um, Nation of Islam, pro-black no, um, I've always found the Nation of guy. Islam interesting. Yeah, they're actually very, very, very conservative. Honestly, the only mm. difference is they believe in white. Like they, they're very huge on white supremacy and the race differences because they follow um, Louis Farrakhan. Right. Mm. Fun fact: His son actually ran into my mom when we were in Las Vegas and I was a baby, and he got mad at my mom because she was carrying me and she had adopted me, and Louis Farrakhan's son got mad at my mom. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. But Umar Johnson is like he he's very critical of Planned Parenthood because the whole purpose was to exterminate the black population and has somehow convince black women that they were doing something good for themselves. Yes, they would and kill they went their own to babies. the churches too. Yeah. Why? yeah, yeah. Here's a question. Why, in your opinion, why is it that when we address that literal fact, it's a historical fact, Harvard, Margaret Sanger, who spoke at KKK rallies at KKK functions, talking about the literal extermination of the black race and about uh, uh, people with mental disabilities and people who thought that she shouldn't be involved in society. Poor people. Right. How come when that's mentioned, it's almost dismissed? It is yeah. totally why dismissed. Why don't they care about that? I, I genuinely don't understand because it's one of the single biggest issues in the black community. The fact that only 3% of black women are ovulating and they're committing 39% of abortions. What? Wait, what? Wow. Is crazy. Wait, what? 3% yeah. of black women ovulate? Yes, that's from the recent statistic that I so read. There's that's, only that's not too surprising to me because out of all the demographics, uh, unfortunately, black women tend to be the unhealthiest. Yes, they're actually if you look at it, they ha are the largest. They are the most obese demographic. Yeah, by they far. are over 80 percent of black women are. obese. Okay. Yeah. What? What is an what's the average percentage of the population of women who ovulate? Because I, th I think like every woman with you know who's not who pre-menopause ovulates right so you're asking for the percentage of women in the whole country that ovulates yeah because okay. if you're saying only three percent of black women yeah, ovulate how 13 percent of the pot we're 13 percent of the population only six percent of the population is black black women pre-menopause three percent of them i think is what it says and only three percent of them are ovulating what, what? so three percent of three percent is what you're of saying? Six percent. Three percent of six percent. Yeah. Oh, six percent is the overall, represents the total uh, women population. Black so women population. Black women are pregnant a lot. Period. Yes, they're getting knocked up a lot. Yes, it's a huge issue. I can't. I can't find that percentage you're thinking of. You're asking for the percentage That's, of white women who are ovulating in America. I guess like women. that. I guess because that would be the comparable. Because what's the percentage of of white people in the country? Seventy percent. So then you would say half of that. Thirty five percent are women. So how many of those women are ovulating? Yeah. Because if it's 3% of 6%, what of 35% is it? I wonder. That's, that's very interesting. I just thought everybody, oh, but then but then that population has to take into account women who aren't even menstruating yet. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's the other thing that you have to take in all those. It's, I mean, it's a huge issue because if you go into 
black neighborhoods, the food that's available available to them food is desert. just dismal. It's a real thing. That's a real thing. Yeah, it's a real thing. The food is dismal. If you go into any grocery store, well, I that's, mean, that's the, that's the eugenics there is, continued. Is yeah. it not? Yeah, and so I mean, how almost, we can't bring that up. But most of Bryson's shade is about most of these places are Democrat run cities. Well, that that's what I'm saying. Margaret Sanger was a Democrat. Go ahead, hold the hold the mic up so Bryson can talk. No, we'll talk about it on our Q and A. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. gonna save it because we gotta we get actually, to it anyway. We gotta get, we gotta get rolling. So, yeah. guys, go to um, uh, what is it? I'm doing great. Dot locals. No, dot- doing great. Oh yeah, sorry, doing great. Dot locals. Dot com. We're gonna continue this conversation with the Q and A with Shekinah and Bryson. So, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we'll have Shekinah back since she's local. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Aww. Did y'all get married? Yeah.